Hey you guys. Okay, so today I am going to do a get ready with me. We're going to be doing kind of just like my go-to everyday makeup. The last one that I did, I was really kind of leaning into just like the bare face trend, like using you just look kind of minimal and this and that and whatever. I don't know. I, I get into that sometime and I'm like, no, just sit down and do what you normally do. I've got so many tricks from the way we should be doing on our under eye concealer. I'm, I'm getting, okay, this is my 40th year. I'm turning 40 in July. I think, you know, all of us kind of need to address like maybe some different and embrace some different makeup trends and kind of let go of some things we thought, you know, used to be the vibe. And I've got a really great trick for under eye concealer as far as, um, you know, like fine lines, camouflaging, like textural issues, which is the worst. There's a very simple trick. It's not about using a different product. It's not about using, you know, or just, oh, I can't use liquid concealer. Oh, I can't use this and that. Mm -mm. Like you just have to do it right and use the right shade. And it's a magic trick. And I just think the reason we're, we've kind of, you've been hearing people say like, well, this doesn't work for mature skin. You know, you can't use liquid concealer after a certain age. You can't do this or that. No. It's because we're still brainwashed into thinking we should be using like either the shade of our skin or shade lighter, or we should be doing this with our under eye concealer or highlighting this or that. No, that's not the vibe. And if you do that, it is going to accentuate, accentuate all those things. So it's about the shade. So about that. Um, and a really great trick with your eyeshadow that I have shared before a little, but I've really, you know, gotten some really great products really great brush that does this sort of under eye shading trick that really camouflages those lines rather than accentuating them and then it also makes your eyes look really you know, like sexy and pretty and very flattering so we're gonna do that i mean i mean even like did my hair with y'all which isn't much but i'm gonna show you how i did my hair um start to finish and all of these products are tried and true favorites i mentioned in my last video that i did not do a full like 2023 best of the year and so that will be coming up next. Um, but I wanted to do a makeup look using my favorites, like using all of these favorite products. So everything that I used, shades, everything will be linked below and listed. Um, because during this one, obviously I'm filming this after the fact, we got a little chatty. I talked in the last video that when I do makeup videos from now on, I'm just gonna focus on the makeup. I'm not gonna talk. I'm not gonna, because then, it's like, okay, an eyebrow's up here, my, you know, I get, I get in my head, you know, that I'm not focusing on the makeup, but I think this one came out really well, even though we just did nothing but talk trash the entire video. Um, but I did, I did have so much fun chit-chatting with you guys. Um, and I think this is a really, I think this is going to be a really fun one. So just hang out with me, grab a drink and a snack, let's do our makeup together and um and talk some talk some trash like i said so uh thank you guys for watching hope you enjoy it and um everything everything will be linked below so we will go ahead and get started okay here we go i have done my skincare i've, I've done all that jazz this is the moisturizer that i used this morning um i've kind of been back and forth with this and a biosance one and i really like both but i have a bunch of these so i've been using for the love of God, don't, um, when you're applying products, don't do that. You're going to waste and you're not filming anything for Instagram. I mean, unless if you, I don't know. It's just a whole thing for looks. Nobody does makeup that way. And I just feel like whenever I see someone doing that, I'm, I just, I'm like, okay, well, I can't, I can't trust anything that you say if that's how you're applying moisturizer because ain't nobody applying moisturizer like that. Okay. Um, I like to, right before I do anything, I like to put on. A little bit like a moisturizing lip balm this one i really do like because it's plumping it's the buxom plump shot and the filler it's not a color it's clear but it's called filler and i'm telling you it's really good in plumping and that like not plumping like an irritating plumping you guys know what i'm talking about but it just smooths your lines and it's very moisturizing and that's what i like so i kind of like to have something on my lips while i'm doing everything and um, as I said in the intro, I am going to be using favorites, okay? Lots of favorites. This is the eye cream that I use. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's depuffing. It's all the good stuff and um, very, very moisturizing. If you're using an eye cream in the morning that's like a gel or something that's like drying really, really dry, 
you don't want it, okay? And I think a long time ago, we were kind of brainwashed by like, oh, you can't put anything, I'm trying to make it weird to flip and stay on, anything like super emollient or like super moisturizing because your makeup will just slide off. Those days are gone. We've learned that that is not the way. You need moisture. It's gonna make your skin look better. And if you're using the right products, they will stay put and you don't need to set it with a ton of powder. And I know I preach that all the time, but you guys, okay. So let's get into it. As we go, I'm gonna, you know, obviously link everything that I'm using. I'm using this foundation. I just, I don't know. The Acne Solutions I feel is, being discontinued. I can't really find my shade many places. I use shade two, but I have like five of them. So I'm trying to use them up and I love this stuff. So again, don't drip it on your face, please. Okay, I put it on my sponge and I just go to down. Oh, something else with my eyes to prep. Every day, this is so important, the eyelid lift serum. I've used it every day for 10 years, right here. And you do not need to use a primer. I have oily skin, oily lids. No, just use it and go. And um, you're gonna, just trust me, okay? Just trust me. I think a lot of times we get in our minds about, oh, we can't do this, it's not gonna work, or we can't do that, it's not gonna work. You'll get a better result. Because if you're fi finding that you have to touch up a lot, maybe you're using the wrong things or you're using something against what your skin is like naturally wanting to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't go too matte and try to powder yourself to heck and back. I was gonna say if you have oily skin, but really if you have, if you just have any skin at all, because that's not what skin wants to do. All right, and then I blot off the lip a little and kind of go around like that. Okay, so I wanted today to talk about, oh gosh the monica of it all and the salt lake city finale and all of those good things is that better okay i changed the yeah it was too bright um all of the good things with salt lake city the bad things i know if you don't watch the show it's not like i'm breaking it down but i think it's just kind of a conversation about so many things that hopefully you can't relate to because it's just nuts but it's kind of like people are comparing it to like Scandal. No, this is a big thing. I just, I, I was a little, not underwhelmed. If you guys listen to our podcast, we told you guys that she was Reality Von Teese. I think we found out in September. September? I don't know. Um, and then I know we talked about it recently, but again, like we talk about different things with all these different shows. Um, I don't want to say like, I don't know, people find out, people talk. It's like a, there's so many people that work on these shows and so many things. So I kind of thought, I knew it was, it had to do with a little bit of like her lawsuit with Heather and a little bit with the other thing. But if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, Salt Lake City Housewives, it was fascinating this year because it's been on for I think four or five years, um, like a core group of women. And what's crazy is that they get, you know, Jen Shaw of it all, okay? that all happened and she's in prison and this new girl named monica comes on the show as a new housewife okay here we go let me tell you this concealer trick before we go further because i'm not going to be chatting it up about makeup too much in this one a little as we go but this is important with under eye concealer do not go lighter than your natural skin color that will accentuate everything it's going to highlight think about it like light colors, highlight, um, don't go too dark either, but you need to go a little, I say a little darker, especially like I'm gonna be 40 this year. I'd say skin of any age, like it's just not flattering to do all those light colors. And I see people still doing that, but then they add other colors. So I'm like, just use the right color from the jump and you don't have to use much. This is the best under eye concealer. It doesn't crease. I use shade um, five and a half um, in that. And so, Anyways, I mean, you don't have to like, oh, put it here and there, put it wherever, but just get the color right, you know, and the formula. And then when you blend it, um, it's going to correct your coloring, but it's not accentuating the fine lines. And up under your eyes, I mean, we all have little fine lines there. If you put a light color concealer, it is going to collect in those lines and accentuate them even more but this is just the way to do concealer. I would say for sure for skin over like 35, especially over 40, 
But when I hear people say, oh, you can't use liquid concealer over a certain age. You can't do this, you can't do that. I'm thinking you absolutely can. You just have to do it right. It's not all created equal, obviously, the techniques and stuff, but this is what I've been doing for a long time now, but recently I've even done a darker shade and it makes the best difference. It's so buildable, but it does not dry out and it doesn't settle and it just layers beautifully over under eye cream and whatever, but make sure you use an under eye cream in the morning. Oh my gosh, like your makeup will last longer. I feel like if you put makeup on top of super like those primers that suck the life out of your skin and just like add a layer of glue or like, you know, nothing at all and you think, oh, that's better. It's not because then it's gonna crack off and look weird, you know? I'd rather just look like bouncy and pretty. Okay, so Monica comes onto the show. She's this new person. She says, you know, I was an informant I was an ex-assistant to Jen Shaw and I was an informant in her legal case where she was like defrauding elderly so she's in prison, okay? Mon or Jen Shaw. So Monica's on the show and I always thought a little bizarre, you know? She doesn't fit in. She acts like she knows the women but the women act like they don't know her. Um, she's teasing all from, from the first episode that she knows more about these women and knows their secrets and all this stuff. And um, she was the one that was the informant and in, she was an informant in, in, for the FBI in Jin Shaw's case. And I always thought, okay, let's hear more about that. We never did. So throughout the series, she brings, or season, she brings her mom on. They have a real kookadoo relationship, which unfortunately, like many people do. And I mean, I think a lot of people kind of related to that in some ways. And also it just read... A little fake at times um I don't know there was something a little off about that I she said you know oh you know I'm I'm I don't run with as thick of a crowd as these women I don't have their level of wealth and you know all of this and that but then she has like a new Range Rover she's buying these expensive things but then crying about it. it's just weird I don't know um so it was odd that she was on the show okay odd choice now what's really interesting to me so it's really interesting to me too about Monica is, you know, she started dropping these little crumbs of, oh, I'm getting weird DMs about these when I'm doing this and that, you know, I know this about you, I know this about blah, blah, blah. You know, back, if you watch the show in the beginning, there was like a season where there was a whole storyline about like a bag that was stolen, you know, allegedly from one of the women on the show's store by you know, Jen Shaw was in there and a member of her team like stole the bag. I don't know. So turns out they rolled the clips back in the finale and Monica was like in a blonde, like, had blonde hair, didn't look like she does now. And she was fully like, you know, in her store. But then she said she wasn't, it was a whole thing. Okay, that was revealed later. But you guys, the big thing that came out at the finale was that Monica, was Reality Vontese, it was this whole thing. Um, I remember that account because that's the account that leaked all the videos of like Jin Shaw like yelling at her assistants and stuff. But this is the thing, I know you don't care about the details if you're not into the show, but the big thing here is that this was like a troll account, not like a gossip account or something, but like, you know, kind of an anonymous account that would, you know, at times troll these women. Now, I'm not seeing that there was a ton about the other women that was crazy, but I think you know, they look back and sh she was on that account reposting things that like Jen Shaw would say about these women kind of to prove like she's not friends with Heather. She's not friends with this person, you know, because she's saying X, Y, and Z about it. So it's not like she was saying, I'm not taking it from Monica. I'm just saying we all like had pitchforks like, oh, Jen Shaw's the worst. But then this person's actually like trying to expose her and we're like, Terrible. Okay, again, troll accounts, not great. What is my makeup mirror doing? It's not staying on, I don't know. Okay, you guys, this is what happens. It's like, whenever, I do my makeup every day, flawless, not the makeup, I'm just saying like, easy breezy, easy breezy, right? And then like, when I set the camera up, my makeup mirror fails, this doesn't work, that, okay, whatever. So they have this big dramatic finale where Heather, who owns Beauty Lab and Laser, which is like, you know, a cosmetic place, like a med spa. Um, think like Botox, injectables. It's kind of like the dry bar for like Botox. You, you go in, you go out, you know what I mean? Um, 
kind of a genius concept. Okay, so it turns out in the finale, Heather, the woman that owns that, I mean, she's she is on the phone with somebody. She she figures out and gets confirmation that Monica is reality Von Teis, and she's like kind of been in their group the whole time, under false pretenses. Kind of felt like in a, I don't want to say thirst bucket way, but like, it seems that this woman had been trying to, from just being Jen Shaw's assistant, through I think her husband was doing like handiwork at Jen Shaw's house, so then like she kind of got in, she installed cameras at Jen Shaw's house, um, and then had access to them on her phone and was watching the women, um, allegedly, I mean that's what they said on the show. It's just bizarre. It is the craziest thing. And then now she's fully made her way onto this show. Now there's a lot of craziness that happens on these shows. They're all thirst buckets, okay? If you're on Real Housewives, you're a thirst bucket. And they would say the same thing. But the, the issue is like, to then like cheat the system and get in on that level. And then here you are, like that's bizarre to me. So the whole time I was thinking production had to have known this is nuts. Um, there was just a whole big blow up in the finale. It's not even, I mean, we broke it down a lot on our podcast, but I really haven't talked about this yet because I just found the whole thing to be so fascinating at the reunion when Monica comes in and, you know, I, I don't know what she was expecting. Like, is she, I don't know if she was expecting to stay on the show to redeem herself. I don't know what she was trying to do, but I do feel that the women kind of had a pact, like we're not effing with her ever again. Like we're not filming with her, like nothing. And in the finale, you know, they were on vacation. They kind of sat her down and they like, you're this person. I mean, I don't have to go through it. It was very dramatic. And it was a really good finale, but she was like, oh, I have more to say. There's so much more to say. And then she kind of was just like, okay, bye. Like you're found out, you know, like you're a troll that trolled us for years that kind of infiltrated our group. But again, there wasn't a lot that they could come up with that Reality Von Teis, Monica, had actually said about the women. It was just kind of reposts about, you know, things Jen Shaw had said about them. And if they really wanted to take down Jen Shaw, then like, what's the problem? And I get that it's a problem. I am not on Monica's side. Like, I'm kind of more like, mm, I don't like that, you know? But some people are so like, ride or die for Monica in this situation that it's insane. <sighs> I think my thing is I don't understand why the women are so still up Jen Shaw's hoo-ha and they say they're not, but they are. And I don't, Jen has something on these women. I mean, from the beginning, I've said that like from the time she was arrested on the show a couple years ago and Lisa Barlow calls all of her lawyers right away. Like if my friend is being, I'm not calling my lawyers. I have nothing to do with that. Do you know what I'm saying? Bye. Like. It was odd, like I, everybody's so odd around Jen Shaw. And she's in prison and they're still terrified of her. It's bizarre. Um, so anyways, this woman kind of exposed that she was the informant, but now the woman found out she was, you know, reality Von Teese. This account that they knew of for years and so now they're like, hi, like we're not into you anymore. Now I know a lot of y'all that watch and care, you're like, I don't need the recap. My big thing with this is Monica, okay, she's not coming back. She was let go. I mean, obviously, and we'll get to that in a second, but Monica didn't make the season, okay? When you watch the season before the reunion or before the finale, it wasn't even that interesting. I don't care. I don't want to see Monica fighting with her mom. Um, there was other stuff going on that was good. It was an interesting season, but it wasn't like amazing because of Monica. What happened at the end around Monica made the season but Monica didn't come out with that in some dramatic way. Heather did. Heather made the season. Monica was going to slink around and, you know, not tell that. Now, she claims that she always wanted it to come out. Well, then just come out with it. You know what I mean? Like, then why didn't she do that on her own terms? I just, she can't argue well. I don't think she had a plan of how to get it out in a good way like Heather did. So Heather made the season. I think the show's going to be just fine without her. Um, but kind of think about it like that. I think that's kind of interesting. Um, before we go on with this, let me just say, this is, okay, these cream eyeshadows, amazing, okay? This one, the mid-century color, and I'm going to put all my shades below. You do not have to, you don't need to do the most with makeup to make it look really good, okay? This is what you want. It's not a powder. I don't want to be putting powders on my lids every day because it's going to suck. Like, would you put powder on your face every day? Not over, I'm saying like, 
like we wonder why our eyes age so quickly. The skin's thinner. We don't have as much oils there, but our lids get oily. You know, your, your eyelids do get oily. I mean, you do have oil there, but you have to think, you know, you think I'm putting this primer on that sucks the life out of them. Then I'm packing on all these powders. What if you did that to your skin? What if you didn't put any moisturizer on your skin? You know, as many people don't do on their eyelids. And then you put on like a primer that sucks the life out of it, like an eyelid primer. And then you put powder all over it, like an eyeshadow your skin's gonna look like crap, like real quick. And so we wonder why our eyelids age. And I'm thinking like, you know, put some stuff on there. And I've done this for years, it works just fine and it's, it's doing just great. Um, and then this is a really good formula and it's a cream, you know, so it's not as drying. It really stays put once it sets. So I put this all over with this brush, which is key, all up in the crease, a little on the brow bone. And then to make your under eye area look really good, and this is just a flattering thing to do with your eyeshadow anyways, this little brush is so, so good. It's the same brand as these, the fluffy. I own two of them because it's actually the perfect concealer brush too. Like if you've got like a problem, you can use the little end to like, oh, I should have done that a little bit there. To, you know, pinpoint little things and then you can blend with this. I do not use a brush for concealer under my eyes. It's streaky, it's tuggy. Always use your bouncy little paw paw sponge and I'll mention, I'll link to those. But you use the fat end and you, um, you smudge under your eye, not in a careful way, but just under, like under the entire eye, like where those little lines are that we all have no matter what age you are. Those, you know what I mean? And it's so flattering it blurs that area and you have to think if you put white there or you put like, it would accentuate everything. So why are we putting bright concealers there? Like don't do it, okay, don't do it. I'm just telling you this is really, really flattering, okay? And then um, I take the darker, this is brown. And most days I just do this, but if I want just a little more, I'll do the brown. You will kind of see where I'm doing that. Um, but, all season, everyone's like, you know, did production know? Did Heather know? Was this like their chance at like trying to do like a Scandaval type moment and like get really good ratings? And I think now, yes. I, you know, everyone's like, oh no, there's no way production knew. Even at the reunion, Andy's like, Heather kind of had suspicions with the other women. She looked at Lisa and she's like, well, I can't believe production would do this to us to bring on someone like this that's literally like trying to get in this friendship, but has ulterior motives and isn't being honest with us and could potentially like be sharing our secrets and profiting off of them. Like can't believe production would do that. And Andy was like, uh, they wouldn't, they didn't know. And Monica's like, yeah, they did. I told them the first day of casting. That was, I think the biggest bombshell because I'm like, well, I always kind of suspected that, but I can't believe she said that. I think that's why she was fired to be honest with you, but also, you have to think, okay? People that want Monica back. What was iconic about Monica this season? She had that sort of like larger than life, like, hey, Jinshaw adjacent, fake. And I can't believe people don't see through that. I see people that are like, oh yes, queen, like, yeah. But it's it's kind of fake, you know what I mean? I, to me, it's kind of fake. And I don't know how I would be if I were on one of these shows. I'd probably be completely ridiculous. Um, I would never, like, I ain't doing that, okay? I'm not going on one of these shows. I was so fascinated by women that do choose to go on these shows because I'm like, if you do have, I think the only time I would do it if you were like completely destitute and you were just like, I'm, I need this, okay? So I understand. But at the same time, like, then why are you getting cast? Like, they tend to just cast people that have like these, you know, seemingly larger than life lifestyles. If you hear something, it is pouring down rain. Um, but then why would they go on? Like, you got too much to lose, and for what, you know? If you're at that level, like, you're probably working on something else anyways. Like, why would you do this to yourself? Honestly, just a little more of the dark. So I think the show is gonna go on just fine without her. I mean, it's not that I really disliked her. I think she could have been really good, but I just think she went about it all wrong. I don't think she's savvy enough. You know, she's, Again, like the women are like, you don't know how to argue. Like you're just like, she'll, she's the type like, you'll be saying something like, nah, -uh, nah, -uh, you are, you are. You know what I mean? It's just that weird kind of arguing. And you can tell she's damaged by a lot of things that happened with her mom. Um, it's just very, very odd to me. But, um, but you have to think if Monica came back, the curtain is lifted. It'd be like, 
the, the fascination and the iconicness of whatever people say of Monica is what happened, what was revealed in the last episode. It wasn't her, it was the entertainment of it, which was orchestrated by Heather in the production. And I just feel like it'd be like watching The Sixth Sense again, which who's doing that unless you're watching it with somebody else, like trying to be like, oh, did you know? Or like that movie, The Others with Nicole Kidman, where like they're all, well, I'm not gonna say, they're all dead. That movie's fucking like 20 years old. We're fine. Um, no spoilers here. But you know what I mean? It's like, the jig is up, like he's dead. Like, <laughs> you know he ain't talking to anybody. <sighs> you know what I mean? And so it's like, if she were on the next season, we already know your secret. I do not want to see you fighting with your mom anymore. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, so you have to think of it like that. It was a good season. Appreciate Monica for what she brought. And then we just have to let her, let her go. But, um, and I hope that she moves on and has a wonderful life. Okay, this is a really great eyeliner. It's Barbarella Brown. And I, it reads very black. It stays on really, really well. This mirror is about to... Okay, the mirror is to stay on, you guys. Okay, last video, it was my hair that had a mind of its own. This video, my makeup mirror is really trolling me. I do have to say something too about, okay, now it's not coming on at all. Oh my gosh, you guys. Okay. I do want to say something too about, the whole black eye situation, um, last year they were on a vacation and Heather got a black eye, woke up with a black eye on vacation. It was obvious to me that Jen Shaw like had something to do with it just by how they were acting. And I just feel like people, are we too trusting? Do people not know like, you need to read people's behaviors. You need to like, you know, what makes the most sense is usually, and you know what I mean? Like, come on, um, watch people's behaviors. You know, I just think it's so fascinating. I thought that was so obvious last season. Um, and then Heather just, and that Heather's reaction made it even more obvious that it was Jen because she'd just be like, I do not know. I will not confirm nor deny. I don't know. It was um, aliens. It was this, and everyone was like, oh my God. And then Jen looked so guilty. But like, for Jen to have, she just is such a bad liar. They just all are terrible liars. Um, which, I mean, a good liar is even worse, but they're just, uh, so anyways, Jen, that was, but anyways, that was another thing. Heather came out that the black eye was done by Jen. And she's like, oh, I'm gonna share how it happened in the finale. That was what I was most excited about, okay? We didn't get nothing, okay? Nothing. Now, I like to smudge that liner. I like to leave it alone sometime. But when I'm really feeling, you know, I will layer on, and I've done this for years, but this is such a good trick with eyeliner. And anything, my nose is like so runny, so I'm all red. Um, I take, you know, you can take the brown end of this. It's kind of a brownish black end or the black black end, which I'm gonna use the black black end. This is the best eyeliner. It's a little expensive, but it will last you a very, very long time. And then you're gonna stick this so close to your lash line that you can barely see it. You're not overlapping all of the liner. You're just getting it right at, so it's almost like your liquid liner is fading out beautifully. Because sometimes I really, on me, don't love just a harsh liquid liner line with thin like pale eyelid behind it. It just doesn't do anything for me. I think when it fades up, it makes your lashes look thicker. It's just cuter. But she didn't say anything about the dang black eye, which she just said, yeah, you know, we had a really crazy drunken night, whatever. And then I woke up and I just knew it was Jen. We just both knew and Jen came in and I thought, oh, this isn't good because Jen already from prison is like probably gonna sue Heather. Like, I'm just saying, like that was, which I can kind of see like why people are afraid. Like she's probably gonna come from prison, which I feel like that's what people are scared of, of Jen. Oh my gosh, I don't know. Like just tell the truth. It, you know, if it happened, it happened. So again, I do believe that's probably the most likely thing that happened, but there were just, there was no details. But then production was like, here's the footage from the room. And they straight up showed like Jen coming in the next morning and you could hear them talking and stuff. 
she was like, did I do that? It was nuts. So, yes, I mean, come on. Like, we kind of figured that. But all the women, like, Heather was like, yeah, you know, this isn't surprising because other women on this stage have had physical altercations with her too. And she looked around and they were all like, and I'm thinking, wait a minute, this woman was on the show. Jen Shaw was on the show for what, three, four years. You guys are having physical altercations. Like what on earth kind of friendship is that? What on earth? Like, I'm sorry. Like my girlfriends and I, like we ain't like beating each other up. You know what I mean? Like if things get like ugly, we don't have a, a, a girl, a gal, a, a gal palling around in the group that we have to like watch our backs because we think she's gonna pop us. Like that ain't, that ain't the, that's, that's not what's happening. You know what I mean? Like I still think the mystery of this show and the intrigue, like yeah, some people might say is still Jen Shaw, but I wanna know like what she has on these women. Like what on earth? I don't know you guys, I just thought that was interesting. I'm trying to think of anything else because honestly, like, so many people have been talking about this lately. Even people that like haven't watched the show, watched that finale and they're kind of like, it's kind of like, I mean, maybe it is like the Scandaval effect. People are starting to watch. If I never hear that word again, Scandaval, that'll be just fine with me. Um, I have used so many mascaras. I always come back to the better than sex. It is so good. This is the black. But la earlier this year, I started buying, or last year, I started buying the brown. And brown mascara would have never been anything that I would have tried. I in the sun and it doesn't breed brown. I feel like it's kind of a cooler vibe because I love piling on mascara and my lashes can, I hope you guys can hear that ring because it's very relaxing. My lashes can look real crazy and black sometimes can look spidery and too stark against like, I like my lids to look dark against the lashes. I just think that's really flattering but you can pile on more of the brown and I feel like it looks more volumized and softer in a way, but still just as flattering and dramatic. I don't know, I really, really love the brown. It's just a really beautiful mascara. This week on our podcast um, coming up, we are going to be talking a lot more about like true crime stuff. And you know, we broke down the Natalia Grace last week and um, we talked about all of the things and conspiracy theories with like housewives shows and some things about like how certain, again, I, like people kind of talk and product, like you kind of figure things out. I don't want to say, you know, you kind of figure things out with these shows. Um, you know, we break down all that. We break down traders every week. We talk about like personal things. There's just so much stuff going on. This week, we are kind of doing a little deep dive into the Scott Peterson, the Lacey Peterson case because the Innocence Project took it on and he's gonna get a retrial. Like, can you guys believe? Like, that's crazy to me. Just because like, I mean, it's been 20 years. I remember this happened my first year in college and that's like all anyone was talking about more than like the war going on. More than, it's, it was nuts, okay? That's like the grip this story had and I know Certain stories get more attention than others. You know, if you're aware that so you should know, like, you know, it's nuts why this story got so much attention. And again, like I've known people in my life that had horrible tragedies that get no cover it, like crazy stuff, gripping, like fascinating stuff. But it's nuts how the media really like spun this and things that, you just remember like what the media told us like you hit the high points like you know the main things the main players in the case the main things that kind of got him convicted which was all I don't say was it circumstantial is that the right word because there was no physical evidence and there was no eyewitnesses you know what I'm saying no witnesses no physical evidence he was convicted like on um he got the death penalty right right um but anyways we're watching the murder of Lacey Peterson documentary, which is like a six part thing, which came out like a couple years ago. But um, I think I've got like a couple more episodes left just because I wanted just to kind of refresh 
my mind on this before we talked about it because it may not be what you think. It may be, I don't know. So you guys will have to see. I mean, we're going to talk about that next week. Um, also this week on the podcast, we dove in to some things. Again, we talk a lot of behind the scenes things. We talk about all these shows, but um, and we do kind of like know some things and like, it, I think it gets fascinating, but we broke down something with Dorit and PK, that whole thing that, you know, with their home invasion. And there was a lot of stuff that we broke down um, when it happened on the podcast, on our podcast. And my opinion was much different than what a lot of people were willing to come out and say. I would never talk about it here on like a YouTube, like that's why our podcast is behind a paywall because I'm not talking about that kind of stuff here. Like nobody should. Um, it's just, it's like not safe to talk about it. Like you just wouldn't talk about that kind of stuff here. But um, we really kind of broke down some things with that and why I think maybe their relationship is a little more strained than it looks and why he's not really taking her PTSD of it all seriously. Um, why do you think that is, guys? Why do you think he, after their robbery, um, maybe playing it off as though He's not taking it as seriously. He's kind of making fun of her about it. He's like, I think it's obnoxious. Um, you know, she's told the story of how, you know, her life was in danger and she had, you know, in the home invasion and everything and her children weren't disturbed, thank God. And he happened, you know, her husband happened to not be home, but they didn't have their alarm on. And, you know, I guess he didn't get pings from their security cameras. Like nobody knew anything. Um, it was just a little strange to me. Uh, but he, and that's all information they've put out, you know, but he almost like isn't taking it seriously, like almost as if like he's thinking like he knew she wasn't in much danger or he's acting like maybe it's, it's, that's what it's appearing. Like he's acting like it wasn't that big of a deal. Full out said that on the show. Like he thought it was obnoxious, like her reaction to what she said, like people had held her at gunpoint and all this stuff, which my God, terrifying. Um, but he's not taking it seriously. Why do you think that is? Okay. And again, I'm being very cryptic here. We're not cryptic on the podcast, okay? Um, and again, it's behind a paywall for a reason, but it's fine. And you know, I always say that with our podcast, like, and I'm not just trying, we have so many people there, we're fine, we're good. But you guys, once you join it, like you get it, but with me, I have always said, like, I've never been on here, like, hawking merch or selling makeup, or if I've ever done anything, it's been in collaboration with a brand like that. Um, I'm happy that if you do pay $5 a month, which is less than, like, a cup of crappy coffee, and people always say that, like, oh, it's less than a cup of coffee, less than a cup of bad coffee, then, you know, I'm giving you something real, a conversation between me and my husband that's about relationships and life and everything. And I'm proud of that. And I'm happy that it's going so well. Unlike this mirror, which can go straight down. No, I'm just kidding. Um, come on, mirror. Listen, I'm just, do you see it flashing? Do you see this happening right now? This is my new one from Christmas and it's already haunted. What is happening? Uh, this is a really good lip liner. Now I know in the last video where I did like a makeup look and I talked the whole time, I never like how my makeup comes out because I'm always focusing on something else or I'm, because I'm talking. I think this is pretty decent. I still gotta do my uh, brows. Whenever I do like a voiceover where I'm really concentrating on that, that does better. But I really wanted to talk to you guys just about a few of these things and just kind of keep it casual today. I think this came out pretty good. This is like my everyday like glam, you know. And I've seen all of the pretty palettes and the makeup and all of the nudes and the net neutrals. Um, that Kim Kardashian has come out with, which people are kind of buzzing about. And I'm a sucker for nudes, but I'm gonna say, you probably don't need it if you have other things. But that's okay, you can try what you want. Um, 
I love these. I love these lip colors so much by Chanel. These Chanel lip colors are so nice. Um, what are they called? They're, it doesn't have the exact product name on it, but they're these, I'll link to them. This is the Tender Beige. But the one that I've used for years, and I actually just repurchased one of these. I've probably had about three of these over the years. This is the Mary Rose. The Tender Beige is slightly darker, but it gives you that effect. But sometimes I don't want it that dark, so I'm not saying you need to buy two to get the effect, but you'll be fine with one or the other. But since I have two, I do that. And this is the lip color that you see me wear every day, and it is not fussy. I put this on once in the morning. Once, okay? Let it set while you do your brows. And then you put the clear gloss over it, which is so moisturizing. And the colors themselves is, they're very long wearing, like they set, but they're not like those old school ones that we all know. Do you remember like those, you know, those that we loved back in the day that would literally like crackle your lips off? This won't do that, thank goodness. But I just put any gloss over it throughout the day and it, um, it works. This is the only brow pencil that anyone should be buying. It is three dollars. I don't want to say I'm about to make a big statement. I was gonna say I will never buy another brow product again. You know I will, but just to try things. But my goodness, this is so good. This is the um instant lift brow pencil. And it doesn't have a shade. Oh, it's on this written microscopically. Neutral brown, so good. Has a little spoolie on the end. I love these. Okay, something that I just saw yesterday. Do we think, okay, we've talked about this at length on the podcast. We get very deep on the podcast about relationships and personal things and struggles and funny things, just updates and you guys know. But then, we get real low into the garbage gutter and talk about all these reality shows. And we have broken down, you know, the Kyle and Morgan Wade of it all. And did you see that a couple days ago, let's see, I, I've, I've held firm with, I mean, listen, you guys, I think everyone's trying to talk themselves. You just see something, it's like, if it's a duck, it's a duck, okay? My thing is, again, like I said before, we need to get better about like reading situations and not talking ourselves out of things. That's how we get scammed. That's how we get into Dirty John situations. That's how we get fooled, ladies, okay? If you see something, you gotta go with your instinct. Don't try to like talk yourself back out of it. Like, okay, they look like they're a couple. And then you think, Probably not though, I don't know. And who cares if they are, who cares if they aren't? I just want people to live their authentic selves, okay? You know, you all on the podcast, you know firmly where I stand on that whole situation. Um, what's interesting to me is yesterday or the day before, Kyle had come out and she was wearing like this big, it's like one of those coats that looks like what, like a boxer is about to like wear when they're going into the ring. I think it was a ring. <laughs> But it was really, like, it said Umansky real big on the back, like, which is, like, her name is Kyle Richards or whatever, but Umansky is, like, Mauricio's name, and they're, like, fully trying to separate themselves and doing all that, and she's, like, wearing it, she's, like, posing, like, showing it and stuff and wanting to be photographed in it, and then also, yesterday, Morgan Wade wiped her Instagram account of everything, Kyle. What do we think? How do we feel about that? So either... There's trouble in paradise or in the friendship. And, okay, or Morgan might be going that annoying route of, well, my account, I'm just too big of a, well, I'm just too big of a star. My account has to be wabbed, which is like really annoying. We've talked about this. Maybe she's like big for her britches now. And she's like, I got to wap this account. Like this, like I got to wap this account. This account needs to be like just professional stuff. And. I ain't got time for like posting, you know, my, my relationships and I ain't gonna follow nobody. I'm not gonna follow anybody. I'm wearing my, maybe that's what she's doing. Who knows? But I thought they were real cute and I really hope, I don't know. I just want to see people be happy. So that's interesting. I wonder what's happening there. I wouldn't be surprised if you see a, a rift with them coinciding with like maybe Kyle and Mauricio getting back together. And um, 
I just did check my pits for stains. Don't don't be alarmed. We're just speculating. That's what we do. Who cares, right? We're just we're just talking. We're just speculating. Um, okay, so then you put the clear gloss over it once it sets. And this is very, very moisturizing. And it almost like doesn't sit on top of the color. It almost like gets into it. It makes it um it doesn't make it dry. It makes it last, you know what I mean? So that even when the gloss dry or wears off, you're not left with like dry desert, like cracky lips, you know? Okay, so I'm gonna do my hair really quickly. You guys saw, um, is this good? Am I done? Yeah, I think I'm done. This is just what I do every day. I really like it. I think it's easy. Um, okay, for my hair, I washed it last night. So it's very just kind of nothing. I didn't dry it with a blow dryer. I kind of just went to bed with it a little damp and honestly just in a ponytail. So it's kind of, um, it's just, it doesn't have much texture, you know, so it's not gonna hold a ponytail real good. So I'm gonna put this, which is a texturizing spray. This is how I do like my little, I hate to say that because it's not a big deal. The pon my ponytail with like my hair out in the front, like with my bangs. I am considering, doing something a little different with my hair coming up and I don't know I just I don't want to get it colored I really have been liking my natural color I love embracing that but honestly like I don't want to cut I really don't know what I want to do with it I mean I'm content it's fine but I'm like I'm kind of ready to feel a little something you know what I mean Okay, so when you get your bangs, you, I like to, I want to get my hair, like, the ponytail done without getting the bangs mixed in. So I just clip those. Um, I don't know if I might put a little bit more of that texture spray in there. If you feel that you need it, like, right around there. And this is going to kind of help, especially if you have hair that's a little finer or straighter. It's going to help, or very clean, like mine is currently. Um, it'll give it some grit so that it goes up in a prettier ponytail that doesn't look so, do you know what I mean? Like little humps and lumps and bumps, it'll kind of go up smoother. So kind of like work that in, brush it out just a little. When I put my hair in a ponytail, I don't use a brush. Like I want it to be straight back and up and usually like I'll do just like a little low bun. Um, and then I don't do this, all this with the texture stuff, but if I'm going to do it higher, which I've liked lately, I clip my bangs up so they don't get mixed in. And I don't like a perfect appearing, I like it to look a little messy. Like, I don't want to look like I've tried to make it perfect. And then there's a little lump and it's like, oh, mm -mm, like, no, I just, I'd rather it just look like an intentional, messier vibe. These are the best, oh, it's covered in hair, but the best little um, scrunchies, the small ones that are by Slip, and they've made them in hair colors now, which I love. And don't worry as you're putting it up if it looks terrible with like bumps and stuff, um, because we'll smooth that. But then I do it like, I pull my little bun up sideways like that. Yo, this is not a big deal. This is like the most basic, nothing hairstyle, like, Oh, it's just, it's not even, I don't know. but then I don't, I don't know. I just thought I'd do it with you a lot. I just wanted to finish getting ready. Okay, now look, that's going to look crazy. So you just kind of pull it and get it um, a little messier and a little eat more even. Um, I just take my fingers and kind of pull it and then take your bangs out. Don't rip them out like I almost just did. And then do your little part again, get them even. Get them even. Um, and see, this is looking a little weird, so just do what you gotta do. Mm, that's better. And then spray it, because I don't like it to be slicked back. This is just some old hair spray by Pantene. I don't even know if they still make this. It's the air spray that's alcohol free. What do I have? I don't even know where that came from. I think I bought it when I had hair extensions and I was like, oh, I need alcohol free stuff. So it's um, straight up like pre-COVID. That's some real old hairspray. Okay, now. 
And then I'm, these are too long and just kind of, I mean, if they were shorter, I'd wear them like that. But I do like to put a tiny little bend in these, like with a curling iron. And I use a heat protectant spray. Y'all, this isn't, I mean, again, this is just like a nothing hairstyle, okay? I'm showing you how to do whatever, I'm just doing it with you. And then um, I take my favorite hair curler and I put it on either one or two because you do, do not need much heat at all. And this is gonna be so fast and I'm gonna explain it before I do it because I don't wanna hold it on too long. But you wanna get it through really quickly and you don't wanna clamp the bottom. Like you wanna leave this much out at the bottom or you're gonna like look like this. You know what I mean? You don't want it to be too curled at the bottom. So I'm, I do that really quick. Leave that at the bottom and then bring it out. And then it just gives you a perfect little bend and then that's straighter. See, if that would've been flipping out, you'd look like a, oh, I don't know what you look like. It just, I don't know. And then the side the same, you clip it away. So you're rolling it away from your face. Leave the ends out and pull it out. So I think that is, that is that y'all. Um, I really just had so much fun talking to y'all today and battling my makeup mirror. Um, is this a me problem? I got a new one of these. Probably you're going to say yes, Tiffany does. I got one of these for Christmas. I got a new one. I had an, one that was very old. It stopped holding charge. It would like flash red all the time, even after it had been charged all, even after it had been charged all night. And it would, okay. So they have like two colors. Like this is the color I like for my makeup and then you can turn it and it's this darker, th this is the only color mine would turn to. It was just the darker like evening. Do you, do you guys remember like that old makeup mirror that like all of our moms had back in the day and you would turn the crank and it would be like rah, rah, rah. and it would say like day, evening, lunch and I would always like put it on the evening one because it would like make you put on too much makeup like for nighttime. Okay, whatever. I like the daytime vibe. My other one was burned out, so I didn't need another one. Um, but this one I feel is doing some real kookadoo stuff too. These simple human makeup mirrors. I love them. Now it's working flawlessly. Now that I'm about to uh, finish this video up. Thank you. Thank you, mirror. Thanks so much for that. Okay. Oh, let me show you these. I, did I talk about these in the last video? Oh my gosh. Y'all know the Big Ass Hoops by Melinda Maria that I love so much. Well, they've made the double ones. Now, this is the smaller version. They have a larger version as well, which I could see myself getting eventually. These babies were little hot commodities. It took a long time to get them because they kept selling out. So if you guys can get these, grab them. They are so cute. They're just like my new go-to everyday hoops, and they're really, really good. So um, that's that. Oh, and then my dress, I'll link my jewelry, my dress. I have, I mean, we've talked about this, like with these one and done dresses. These are technically, they're called like lounge dresses. I wear them around the house. I wear them out. I'll put a sweater over them. I wear them with sneakers. I wear them with heels. You could do anything, although I'm not wearing heels that much, but um, you, you saw me. I'm mostly wearing around the house and to run errands, but they're, it's kind of like a double, fabric type of thing this these like like scoop you like snatch you up and I'm wearing a medium I could have done a large it does take a little bit of wrangling to get into the sucker but once you're in it you're in it and it's good and it's comfortable and um and I just and I really really love this color I also have it in the charcoal color but these are so good you guys and oh every time I ever post these or I link to them or whatever, a ton of you guys always grab them. And I mean, every, everybody always loves these. So they're really, really nice. They're very flattering. The material is really good. Why am I whispering? All right, you guys. So I hope you enjoyed this a lot. I mean, all these things are kind of just my go-to favorites and I wanted to do a really, you know, collective favorites of 2023, which I really didn't do last year at the end. Um, or sometimes I do it like the first week of January and I just hadn't got the chance to do that yet. So my next video, I'm going to be going through so many favorites, really getting into depth about a lot of these products. I know I dropped like some specific tips in this video, like a, as far as 
you know, the trick with your eyeshadow and your concealer and stuff. And I told myself when I did the last makeup video, I was like, the next one, I'm just going to talk about the makeup as I do it so I don't get distracted talking about garbage. This video, we talk nothing but garbage. So I, I don't know, but I think it came out really good. Um, but next video, you guys, we're going to get into so much depth. I'm mentioning a few of these products, but also we're going to get into just all my beauty favorites. Skincare, I've got a big basket here, and um, that's going to be coming up next. So thank you guys so much. I loved hanging with you today. Have the best week, weekend, and I will see you later. Bye, guys.